Hey everyone, it's Nicole. Welcome back to my channel, Relax Cut Glue. If you're new here, welcome. I'm so happy to have you all here with me today. So thank you guys so much for responding yesterday to in the comments to my video about wanting a full tutorial on this little glue book slash journal that I made out of Dollar Tree bags. So let's get going on that. I'm going to, so when I made these, or this glue book, I used this treat bag. It's 10 of them, and they are just a little bit smaller than these, which are also from the Dollar Tree. So I'm gonna try using one of these today, and let's get started turning this into this. So let me grab my bag. So what you're going to need, let me get these out of the way, are two bags, any size. It doesn't matter the size, but it will matter um, the end result will be a little bit different because of the size. Now I wanted to show you, let me see if I can, I wanted to show you the size difference here. So there's the size difference in those bags, but I also grabbed some Dollar Tree lunch paper bags and that made this size. So I made this yesterday. Um, I didn't get a chance to put this paper in yet, but this is what I was working on. I showed the glue crew um, that I had made one with a paper sack in case, you know, that's all you had around the house. So yeah, this was made out of a lunch bag. So that's the difference in size right there. They're the same width, just different heights. And you can make the width any size you want. So let's get started. I like to use my cutting mat when I make these because I can um, I can measure my bag appropriately. So the first step, and this is honestly the hardest step and it's not even that hard, it's just tedious. So you're gonna open up your bag. I also wanna preface, preface, preface the difference between using a lunch bag and these is the lunch bag is thinner. Um, once you put your cardstock on here and stuff, it's still like pretty thick, but in terms of getting it into the shape you want, it's a little bit more difficult. Whereas these bags are meant for parties and treats and stuff. So they're like thicker, which you would think a lunch sack would be thicker because it's carrying lunch, but whatevs. So you're going to grab the inside of the side here and I just kind of give it a little pinch and I just follow the natural progression of where this crease is. And I just keep creasing all the way down. And when you get down here, there's a little triangle here. And instead of that triangle going in, which it normally does, you're going to have it go out like that. So then you pinch it and now you have that side done. See how you have that. Now let's do the other side. And do the same thing, pinch it, work your way down. Once you get to the triangle, push it in. See how I bent it, how it bent right there? Just put your hand back in there, put your little finger or a pencil or something right there, and then go again. So there we go, okay. And now we have it. The second one is usually easier because the first one has already been uh, formed, so it does make it easier. Okay, so now I'm just going, going to give this a little crease, give it its new shape, let it know that this is your shape now. You are not no longer a lunch sack or a treat bag. You are now a glue book or a journal. You have evolved. <laughs> Okay, so there you have that. Set that aside. I'm going to grab my little trimmer here and I'm just going to trim off the bottom part here. And save that for something else. One thing you can do is I took the bottom part of my lunch sack and I made it just a little bag to put some of my little things I keep on my desk that I've been working on. So you just open it up like this and now you have this little 
thing to put like paper, like if you're fussy cutting, you can put your little pieces there. You can tape this to the edge of your table and then just scoot all your scraps into it, into your lap, all kinds of things you can do there. Okay, so we have that piece, we no longer need it. Oh, and I like to cut off this rigid edge, edge here. If you don't care about that, then don't do it. Okay. Got this weird guy walking in front of my house right now. Go away. <laughs> He's looking at my son's car. Um, okay. So there we have that. Now we're just going to do the same thing. Open it up. Push that crease outwards instead of inwards. Same on the other side. Push that out. Lay it flat. And give it a little crease. Just to give it a new life it'll also make your life easier if it's now creased into this position versus the folded position that was in before so just crease that down okay so now i put the jagged edge of the bag inside of this piece because i don't want the jagged part to show it's just ugly i don't like it no offense jagged piece but your home is inside the bag okay so now i just slide it in there like so and now we have the base of our bag so this piece here is your front flap so right where it it ends here you're just going to fold that over make sure it's you know the edges are even and give that a crease so that is now your front closing flap so just crease that so it'll go like this but for this purpose i'm turning it around so now that our flap is folded over we will end up gluing this piece, but for the sake of this, let's just keep going. So now I'm going to put my folded edge on my mat and I'm making sure that my bag is even all the way across. Now I want my inside of my book to be five and three quarters. And the reason why is because I'm going to be taking eight and a half by 11 sheets of paper for my signature and folding them in half, which makes them five and a half inches. So if my book is five and three quarters, it gives me a quarter inch of wiggle room there in case um, as you fill it up, sometimes the middle extends and that just gives you a little bit of wiggle room and it makes it easier to open and close your book. But you can make it any length, any wide, any uh, width that you want. So because I want mine to be five and three quarters, I need this whole thing to be 11 and a half inches. So I'm just gonna move my bag down scooch it down till I get to 11 and a half. And again, I wanna make sure that my edges are even here because sometimes the bag can kinda, of, like the up, upper part can kinda of go this way or maybe the bottom part goes that way and then it's not even anymore. And then when you go to fold it, it's gonna be wonky and then it's gonna irritate you. And that's not fun, we don't want that. Okay, so relining it, making sure my bag is on the line on the line, making sure this piece is also on the line. That way I know it's straight up and down. I have this at 11 and a half, so we're good to go. So just leave it sitting there for a second. I'm gonna take my wet glue and I'm just gonna hold this down. I'm just gonna put my nozzle in there and just put a little stream of glue. This is just to keep this together um, while we, uh, Ooh, I went a little heavy on the glue today. Doesn't matter, that's gonna be covered anyways. Um, this just keeps it in place so that when we go to put our papers over the top later, you know, our bag isn't moving around. Okay, so now gently flip it over and do the same thing. I just like to hold it so it stays in place, add a little glue. I finally added a little bit more glue into my bottle so I didn't have to, I realize now I don't have to press as hard. <laughs> my glue is coming out. Okay, so there we go. Okay, so now you flip it over and let's glue this piece down. Okay, so we'll just glue that piece down. Give that a nice little press. Wow, I am going super heavy with the glue today. I'm not used to having such a full bottle. How did glue get up here? just oozing out everywhere. Okay, so now when you fold your pages over, oh wait, sorry, back up. I also closed this flap right here. And I mentioned in my other video when I was showing this that I, 
originally thought I'd leave this open as a pocket so I could store like images or whatever in there. But when you add your cardstock on the cover um, and inside, it makes this very rigid. So it'd be very hard to get your images in and out. So that's just not for me. Okay, so now that that's glued, I just wanna give that a little press. Okay, so now fold it in. Now, I don't push, put my paper all the way up to the fold line because that makes it harder for your, your flap to close. So give it about an eighth of an inch um, to the uh, folded line there and then just fold your bag in half like so. Now it's gonna be a little fluffy at first because you know air gets in there and all that kind of stuff, but once you start adding your papers and your and this gets used to being flat, it's it's not fluffy and obnoxious anymore. So there you go. You have that. There's your journal already getting ready to go. So you've already made it, and we did that in record time. Super easy, super fast. Let me move this over just a little bit. There we go. Okay, so there, now we have our glue book. Let me just put my lid on here. Okay, so now we are going to add the front covers to this. Now this should be the same as my last one. Um, so I, because this is five and three quarters, and it may just be a little bit off, I did find that this piece and this piece are just a hair bigger than this piece and this piece. So just make sure you measure your papers first. Um, and then I always go about a quarter of an inch smaller all the way around to give me a little bit of a border. So just measure what you have and then go a quarter of an inch smaller. So mine should be five and three quarters. So one, two, three, four, five and three quarters. So I'm gonna make this five and a half wide and then let's see how tall this bag ended up being. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven and a quarter. So I think I'll go seven. It's just shy of seven and a quarter. Um, so maybe I'll go about seven high, five and a half wide. Okay, seven high, five and a half wide. So let's cut our paper. So for the covers, I'm going to use these two papers. One is uh, cameras and the other is just this navy blue with the pink and this has navy blue and pink. So this will be my front cover and I need to cut this to five and a half. Okay. And then I need to cut it to seven. All right. So let's see if that gives us a nice little border and it does. So let me show you, let me open this. Hold on one second here. I'll move this out of the way. I'm gonna open this up so you can actually see the little border here. So there we have just a little border of pink all the way around. All right. So that will go here. And then I think I'll do the inside with the other one and put this on the back as well. So let's repeat, cut another piece. Five and a half by seven. Put those papers aside. And then the inside papers, I need to cut those. Where'd my paper go? And we will cut these the same, five and a half by seven. Five and a half. Yes. Okay. So what I have been doing is I take my glue stick and I just hold my paper down and go across like this. It doesn't have to be perfect in my opinion, but you know, you do you kind of go along the edges a little bit, go all the way around. And then I take my glue and I take my wet glue and go around the edges. Cause for me, it's more important that my edges stay perfect and don't lift. Oops, okay. So let's just pick that up. Oh my gosh, I'm so messy today. What's going on? Okay, here we go. First piece is going down. 
Just kind of make that as even as you can. If you don't care if it's even or not, then don't worry. Oh my gosh, I am, what is happening today? <laughs> I'm like cursed. Okay, first of all, I did not put that where I wanted it. Hold on, I've got so much glue on my hand. Let's see if I can't push that down a little bit. Okay, where's my tool? So then we'll just press that down, get the excess glue off that you wiped everywhere. Okay. All right, so I went a little bit high on the top here, but that's okay. It's not, you know what, you guys, it's not that big of a deal. Okay, so now we have that piece. Let's glue in our middle pieces. That would be this piece and this piece. So let's get going on that. Same thing, just, oops, come back. We got a runner. And go around the edge. Wet glue. You could use double-sided tape. The reason why I don't is because I often find that I need to have, have just a little bit of wiggle room to move my paper how I want it. Um, and these are paper bags, so they're not going to be exactly perfect. So sometimes you need to wiggle your paper around just to make sure that it's how you want it. And with the double-sided tape, that makes it a little bit harder. Okay. So there we go. And repeat. So I'm going to go do the other two pieces, and then I'll be right back. Okay, so now I have my front the inside and the back done. So now we're gonna work on this flap. Now, I just wanna say here that this is the technique that works for me. There, I'm sure there are several different ways out there. So if you see another YouTuber doing it a different way, they're not wrong, I'm not wrong. There's several different ways to do things. So this is what works for me. If you have a better way, do that way for you. So what I'm going to do is turn my paper over. Is there a side that has more blue than other? Okay, this side. So what I'm going to do is trace my flap here on this paper. So I'm lining up the crease mark with the bottom of the paper and then the edge of the paper on the edge. So I'm just going to take my pencil. I have turned my paper upside down. So I'm just going to do that. And then I'm going to take my ruler and I'm going to trace a shorter line all the way around on the inside, which will give me just a smaller, so I'm just gonna go like that. I'm just eyeballing it. You do not have to eyeball it. You can do whatever you want. So I'm just taking about an eighth of an inch off all the way around. Sorry, that was my glue stick that just fell. And there. Okay, so now I'm just going to trim it with some scissors. Oh wait, I didn't do the sides, Durr. Okay, hold on, sorry. <laughs> Gotta do the sides too. It's gonna be totally uneven. There we go. Okay, so now I'm just going to cut the inside lines, not the outside. So let's just cut that. I hate using scissors because I feel like it's never perfect for me, but it's really just easier with this. And it's just a flap in a journal. Nobody's gonna be critiquing how perfect your flap is. And if they are, ew, get them out of your life. <laughs> Who needs that? All right, here we go. So now I'm going to put it on the front here and just see how this fits. Okay, it fits good. Now I didn't trim off the bottom yet, so I'm going to do that now. Will it fit in this one? It will not, okay. 
So I'm just gonna use my paper trimmer and take about the same amount off the bottom that I did off the sides. Okay, so you see here, I just took off that little bit off the bottom. So now this should fit on here. Perfect. Look at that. So easy. Okay. So here's the trick for the other side though. So now that you have that, this piece, so it was like this, right? It was like this. So you want to flip it over and trace it because it's going to be, you want it opposite. You want it the opposite side. Okay. Editing Nicole here. You only need to do this if you're using a patterned paper with this it doesn't matter if the pattern it goes up or down, but if you're using something where, you know, if you're using a palm tree, if you don't do it this way, your palm trees will end up upside down. With this one, it's just cloud, so it wouldn't matter if it was upside down or not. So I just always do this this way just to make sure that it's right. Okay, bye. So I'm just going to line it up here, take my pencil gently, now this one you don't have to trace inside lines for because this is the exact size you want it to be. And if you're making a bunch of these for like a group swap or for Christmas presents or whatever, just make yourself a template because all these bags will be the same size. Okay. Oops. I have a little bit of a slice in mine, but that's okay because you won't really even be able to tell. Okay, so now here's the inside one and it fits perfect as well. So let's put that paper aside. Let's grab all of our scraps, get those out of the way. A clean workspace is a happy workspace for some of us, not everybody. Okay, so let's glue these down. This one goes on the front and this one goes on the back. I'm gonna do the same thing. Just add glue stick on the back and then wet glue around the edges because this is cardstock and Art Glitter Glue is a fast drying glue, which is nice. I feel like fast drying glues, this is gonna sound super contradictory, but I think of glue sticks as a dry glue and obviously wet glue as a wet glue. But some wet glues have like more water in them than others because they just like totally saturate your paper and make it all wrinkly and stuff which is why I usually prefer glue sticks. Okay, so we got that down. You can ink around your edges and stuff if you want. I'm not doing that today. And then let's do the front, same thing. Bada bing, bada boom, baby. We're getting this thing done. These are very quick to make, especially after you make your first one. And it's really fun because you can make them as wide as you want. Like I said, I made mine five and a half or five and three quarters because I'm going to fold um, an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper in half. And, you know, I like to make my life easier. So <laughs> by doing that. Okay. So there we go. Press that down. Get a nice press. Really let that glue, glue adhere to the paper. Okay. So there we have our front cover and the inside. So let's work on our inside papers. So what I did for my other book is I did five pieces of colored printer paper from the Dollar Tree. So I'm gonna do that again. I'm just gonna take it out of the packaging because that makes it hard. So one, two, three. What other color do we have? Oh, there's a tan in here. Do I have that one? Yes, I have that one. I have yellow. I don't have the orange. Four. Oh, and the green. There we go. Five. Okay, so these are just pastel printer paper. I like to use printer paper because it's thin. And when we glue on things, it makes them bulky. Okay, so I have these five pieces of printer paper. 
And then I have three pieces of like brightly colored paper and they don't fully match what's going on here. But the ones that I did, where's my glue book? Oh, here it is. The ones I did for this one don't really either. I just wanted some bright colors. Um, so I have the cheetah print, the sprinkles, and then there's one more. Where is it? This. And I'm going to use that one again today. So I just wanted some bright, fun colors. So I'm going to use these. So here's the thing. So let's fold all of our papers in half. I wanted to show you the thing. I was just about to tell you here. Hold on. Okay, so eight and a half and 11, fold it in half. Now these are like the ones that you can get for 59 cents or, you know, four for a dollar or whatever at Hobby Lobby. So when I trim these down, I want this stuff to be at the top because I want to cut that off if I can. And you can. So let's fold all these and make sure that they're all at the top. Okay. So I'm going to go fold all my papers in half and then I will be right back because that's tedious and you guys don't want to sit here and watch me do that. So I'll be right back. Okay, so now I have all my papers folded. I want to make sure that all of these have that writing at the top. They do. Okay, so I just stack my papers. Let's see again, how tall was this? Seven and a quarter. So I think I'll just cut them down to seven and some change. Okay, so I'm going to cut my paper down to seven inches tall. And I'm going to cut all of mine at once. All right. And we're cutting. Oh, wait, was this the top side with my writing? Ooh, Nicole, glad I double checked. Mm -mm -mm. Naughty, naughty. I almost cut the wrong end. That's why you got to check. No, now I'm, now I'm self-conscious. I need to check again. Okay. All right. So, all right, let's cut this down to seven. Nobody in the comments tell me that I'm using my ruler wrong. I have to go over this every time. I am not using it wrong. There is a reason why I'm using it this way. I've explained it a million times. Okay, so save these. You can save these for some grid gluing or whatever else you want to use them for. So let's figure out how I want... How did I do this? Did I do... I know I did it every other. That's right. Okay, so I'm going to... How do I want to start this? Do I want this first? Do I want this first? That's too dark. Maybe I'll start with this. Yeah, okay. So I'm going to put that there and then a green. And what do I have left? Maybe the orange and then one of these. So I did... Printed paper, two solid. Printed paper, I'm gonna do two solid again. And then I'm going to do one more solid and one, or one more print and then solid. Okay, hold on. Sorry guys, you see what I'm doing? Do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> okay. You don't have to do it this way. I just wanna clarify that. This is just how I do it, so I wanna show you. So I did printed paper, two solids, printed paper, two solids, printed paper, one solid. Okay, so I have eight pieces of paper. All right, let's sew this bad boy in. So now your paper should be seven inches tall, five and a half wide. Let's sew in our signature. Let me get my stuff and I'll be right back. Okay, I have all of my supplies. So the first thing I'm going to do is take my paper I'm gonna put it in between my fingers here with my pointer finger in here. That just helps push the papers together. And then I'm gonna slap it down on the table. Sorry for jiggling the camera, but it was a necessity. So that way it's nice and flat. And the paper is all pushed up into this point. You want this point, all your papers to be totally flush. Otherwise your papers are not gonna come out looking good. So now I just position my papers how I want them. I just kind of make it even all the way across or, you know, even on either side here. So I'm going to take a paper clip and I'm going to paper clip each side. So 
So this is kind of hard with the little flappy flap, but then I take my awl and I'm just, you can measure this if you want. I'm just eyeballing it. I'm going to put three holes. So I put one in the middle, as close to the middle as I can get. Again, it doesn't really matter, but I just eyeball it and I'm gonna punch a hole in there with my awl and I just wiggle it a little bit. I know on camera it looks like I'm like, I'm really not. Um, I'm just doing that a little bit. And then I go about, I don't know, an inch and a quarter or so from the top and I eyeball the same amount on the bottom. It really helps too if you keep your book kind of folded how it's going to be folded when you punch these holes. Okay. All right, so we have those punched. Now I'm going to take my embroidery floss. And when you're doing a three hole pamphlet stitch, which is what we're going to do, you take your string of whatever choice you want. I always use embroidery floss, it just works for me. And you do it three times the height of your book. So we have one, two, three. Rough estimate. It does not have to be perfect. And that'll give you a little bit of wiggle room as well. Okay, so now I take my needle and I'm going to thread my embroidery floss. All right. Lick it and stick it. <laughs> okay, let me move this out of the way. All right, three whole pamphlet stitch. We've been through this a few times, but let's go through it one more time for the people in the back who were not here before. All right, so I this is how I do it. Again, lots of different ways to do it. So don't be confused if you see another person doing it a little bit different. It's totally okay. There's lots of different ways to do it. So I go in through the middle first. And you wanna leave a bit of a tail. You can kind of tuck that under one of your clips if you need to. I never do, but you totally can. And then I'm going to go in the bottom hole, come back up, go in the top hole, pull it out a little bit. I'm gonna, now my tail has shrunk, I'm gonna get my tail a bit longer again. Now here's the key part. I'm gonna move my tail, kind of pull it over to the side there because I'm gonna go back in that middle hole and you do not want to go through that thread and you wanna make sure that you're on the opposite side that the other thread is on. So now I have two pieces of thread, one on either side of the middle here and just give it a little pull very gently. You could rip your, the little holes here. So I just kind of pull from this way, turn it around, pull from that way, open it up, make sure that your strings are tight. I can pull mine a little bit tighter. So that's what I'm going to do. Okay, and then just give it a knot. I tie mine three times. You can tie yours however many times you wanna tie it. And then you can either cut this off or leave a little bit so you can add a little dangly do like I did on my other one. Okay, so let me clean this up and I'll be right back. Okay, so now we close our book. Oops, there we go. So now we have our book and we close it and we have this nice cute little journal there we go. Looking good, if I do say so myself. There we go. Okay, so I added some Velcro right here. This little piece is driving me nuts. It keeps popping up. Why is it doing that? Hmm. Maybe I need to fold this back just a little bit. Ugh. I just need to glue it. Okay, so I added some Velcro right here. So let's add some of that. I'm just going to use Velcro from the Dollar Tree. So let's open this up. So what I'm going to do is add my Velcro where I want it. Let's see. I'm going to put it in the middle. I'll put it about... If I'm going to err, I err on the side of it being a little higher than the middle, than lower. And I bring it in about, I don't know, a quarter of an inch. 
And then I'm going to take this piece and I'm going to put it Velcro side to Velcro side, sticky side up, making sure it's on there how I want it. Then I'm going to close my book and press it down. Now we have our Velcro, easy peasy lemon squeezy. This is catching a little bit. I don't know why that didn't happen on my last one. So I'm just going to trim off just a wee bit of this paper, like the tiniest bit, because it's like really driving me nuts. Nope, I think we're good. Okay, so let's try it now. Oh, much better. Okay, I think I just folded it. Um, it rolled up a little bit. Okay, adjustments have been made. All right, so there is our little glue book or a journal, however you want it to be. Look how cute that is. So we could add a pocket right here. So let's do that. I have this paper is the same width as this because it was cut from before. So I like to make my pockets about two and a half inches tall. I don't like them to be too tall. That's just a personal choice there. So I could add this right here. So let's do that. And I did something really cool with my hexagon punch is I used this to put a little notch into my last uh, glue book. I don't know if you noticed that. I'll show you here in a second. So I used that instead of my round one. Where's my other book? Right here. That's what I used was my hexagon punch. I'm getting my use out of these punches. I'm telling you. Okay, and I'm just going to round the top corners with my small corner rounder, just because I like it like that. And now I'm going to use my glue, any glue you prefer. I prefer art glitter. And now I'm just going to go along the three sides here. Oops. Okay. And glue it down. There we go. So I have that cute little pocket there. I can add images or whatever I want to add there. All right. And then, you know, you could add, if this is a journal, you could add more pockets in here as well. So don't be afraid to have fun and add things to your book. It's all yours. Do what you like. But I like having that pocket here. Now, in the back, you could add a waterfall here as well. I would add less papers, but you could totally add a waterfall. Um, I don't think I'm going to do that. I'd probably just add another pocket back here. So let's do that. What's this at? Oh, I'm just use this because it's obviously the same size. Okay, so let's add another pocket in the back because why not? We already have this paper. It's already trimmed. Is that even? close enough. I'm such a weird personality. I go from this has to be even to close enough. <laughs> it really depends on my mood. Okay. Same thing. Go along the edges with your glue. I do not recommend using double-sided tape for this. Some people do. That's totally fine. Do what you want to do. Do not let anybody tell you different. I personally don't like double-sided tape because when you put things into the pockets, uh, the tape can sometimes, because it's sticky, will um, catch on to some of your stuff and it'll stick inside your pocket. Whereas glue, it dries, so you'll be fine. Okay, so now we have a pocket in the front and a pocket in the back. Look at that. We got a party in the front and a party in the back. Oh my gosh, that's too cute. And then of course, you can embellish it. You could add... Um, Look, I have this trim right here. I could add some trim on the side or I could add it down here. I don't know, what should I do? Should I add trim? I kinda liked it over here. That was kinda cute. Yeah, so I could add trim if I wanted to. I'm not going to right the second. But yeah, look how fun these are, super fun really easy. The only difference in these is about a half an inch in height. So these weren't that different. I thought they would be a lot bigger, but they're really not. It's only a half an inch. So, all right, you guys, if you have any more questions, definitely let me know. These are super easy. Once you get started, 
you'll just start flying because it's really that easy. I hope you guys have a fabulous day. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day to watch my video. If you wouldn't mind, hit that like button. Subscribe if you haven't already. All the cool kids are doing it. Don't forget to drink your water and I will see you guys tomorrow.